Good morning and welcome to Kleinshire. Uh, we are busy with processing right now. You know that we raise goats and they're not just pets. Uh, we, we sell a bunch but every year we keep back at least one prime weather for ourselves. Uh, I processed him yesterday. Uh, he hung and, and um, cooled down overnight and now I've uh, skinned him and Rosemary is trying out her Christmas present. What are you up to, Rosemary? I'm getting the feel for this, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Flushing? <laughs> Flushing. Flushing blade? I think one thing for future is to actually make myself a board that is really smooth because that's one of the problems. I'm nicking this, but I think it's because this is a sawhorse and it's not completely smooth. <laughs> so, we're getting the idea though. I know some of you who have tanned hides and used hides for a long time will be scandalized, but honestly, <laughs> <laughs> for we're having... well, you'll be scandalized on multiple fronts. First of all, by our rough job, um, but you have to start somewhere, right? But you have to learn. I was going to say, you may be scandalized because we've basically thrown away the hides to this point which is terribly wasteful, and I think that's really what's given rise to this. Uh, we, we processed our first beef steer a few weeks ago, and Rosemary has that hide uh, all fleshed and salted. Uh, it's a big project, and now I've butchered this weather, and we're going to work on the hide as well. All right. I'm going to leave Rosemary out here to work on her project. Let me take you in and show you how I break down a goat. Well, here we are. I have this goat uh, completely uh, cleaned and ready to be cut into the primal cuts. This is a, one of our meat goats, a weather, not from this past kidding season, but the season before, which makes him a little more than a year and a half old. If I had to estimate, I would say that he was probably about 100 pounds live weight. Of course, you lose quite a bit by the time you take out uh, everything that's inside, the organs, the stomachs, uh, it's a lot of the weight of a goat, so it's a whole lot less. And then as I cut this down more, and since it's going to be, parts are going to be boned out, the total meat that I'm expecting to get here is probably something like 35 to 40 pounds, nothing more than that. Uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll weigh it once it's all cut down. This goat, as I said, was a weather, which means that he was a castrated male. Uh, he lived the herd completely grass-fed. We don't do any grain whatsoever. Um, his father was a Kiko, which is a goat that we breed for uh, it's um, parasite resistance and overall toughness. Uh, his mother was a boar cross, which means that she was mainly boar and she may have had a little dairy in her, maybe Nubian. Um, but he grew well. He was a very healthy goat and a good example of what we're trying to do here in our herd, which is not grow the big fat boars necessarily, but a tough goat that does well on pasture and grows out little slower than if you're doing boars in a feedlot, uh, but if you have the pasture as we do and the hay, um, a whole lot more of an economical and healthy and natural way to raise a goat. So what am I going to do here? Well, I'm gonna cut it into some of the primal cuts. I'm gonna take um, these four shanks off here and we'll probably make some roasts out of that and do some boning out as well. I'm going to take the neck and I'm going to make a boneless neck roast, I think, uh, just like I would venison. I am going to take uh, the hindquarters here and I'll probably make some roasts, maybe bone in, maybe boneless, uh, maybe some uh, steaks from uh, what you call the round here, I guess, uh, as well. I'm going to take the ribs, uh, which are really good and we'll take those off. And I'm going to make uh, some rib chops out of this and um, you know, some little chops down here past the ribs as well where you would get uh, some, um, you know, some of your steaks 
on a, a larger animal. So I'm planning to utilize this animal, cut it into some nice cuts, and be patient. I wouldn't do this on any goat. If we, for example, are butchering a young goat, we may roast the goat whole. If I've got one of our old nannies, I would probably bone out a lot of it and pressure can the meat because it's a little tougher. But this guy is prime butchering age and this meat, you know, it's worth the patience to get the nice cuts even on a smaller animal like this. Four shanks are very easy to get off. There's not much attaching them at all. Just cartilage. Just like that. I like to switch knives. Got my boning knife here. But anytime I'm gonna cut something that gives a little resistance, I'm switching to my bigger knife. Less sharpening that way. Okay, there's two four shanks. We'll break those down even more shortly, but I want to finish my primal cuts first. Let's get the neck here. You do as much as you can with the knife. Right there. Then switch to the saw. Got a neck. Next, we're going to split the brisket there, or maybe just cut it. Cutting it's easier because I will just be boning out the brisket. By the way, for a goat, there are lots of different ways to do it. A lot of people have their own preferences. This is what works for me right now. You have to do what works for you. piece can be boned out. What we have here is this loose flap here is called the flank. I am going to take that off and you know I think it'll just be ground up. We'll grind some of this. This could be chopped up into some sort of stew meat or meat for stir fries, but what we'll do today is uh, we'll grind it. So what we have now here are the ribs, and I'm going to leave some of the rib attached to the spine so I can make my... Um, chops, but the majority of the rib here I'm going to take off. I'm going to cut
cut it. So bear with me. Decide my best angle here. Way of attack. Enough rib. Well, there's one rib. Get cleaned up, of course. Now I have to do the same thing on the other side. Oh, look at that. My glove split. Might have to get myself a new glove. All right, there's another rib. You can see that I left rib on both sides so I can make my chops. Nearly there. But I need to go find a new glove. That's better. All right, so what do we have left? Not too much. Just have these hind legs that need to come off. They're a little bit tougher than the front legs because there's a ball joint in there. And I'm not great at finding it. So pardon the hack job. But cut in, kind of look for the place where there's a little flexibility. And if I don't quite get it, there'll be more meat for the scraps. There's a little ball, basically, right there. And well, here we go. Get the ball joint there, cut along the pelvis, and this will also be further broken down. Now I have to do the same thing for the other side. Okay, and there is the second hind leg. So before I start breaking down the ribs and the loin, this uh, centerpiece here, I want to do a little cleanup. So here I'll use my nice um, boning knife, removing the excess fat, which will go either to the pigs or to our working dogs. Some of the silver skin. And if you look inside, you see there's some cleanup too, some interior fat. Now, we just butchered that beef steer and we rendered a lot of that uh, suet into tallow, which we'll use for soap making. And uh, later we will be butchering pigs and we use the pig fat a lot for cooking. Um, we render that down. Goat fat. You know, I think there are some people from some cultures who will watch this video and wince as they watch me take this fat and uh, throw it in for the dogs and the pigs, but I, I just, I haven't incorporated everything uh, into our own diet. And the fact is, 
we're not the only ones here on the farm that eat. The dogs do also need to eat. They play an important role and, and they benefit from uh, this healthy um, source of protein as opposed to the, the store-bought dog food. Plus, it's uh, a lot cheaper. Um, so, you know, it's not that it goes to waste, but I do want to acknowledge that I, that I know that some of these things that I'm taking out uh, are, are edible and can make delicious dishes. Same thing with the head, for instance. You know, for I, I boiled down a pig's head and made head cheese. Um, you know, I, I even took the jowls and the tongue off our steer when we processed him. I've, I've talked to people who take and skin the whole head of a goat and that gets eaten as well. But you know, that one for us, it's gonna go to the animals as well. All right, so um, my midsection here is cleaned off well enough for now. And I will count a few ribs down, one, two, three, four, somewhere between the fourth and fifth ribs or so. I'm going to make a cut here. I think I'll use the saw for now. I'll just bone out this front section closer to where the neck was. Cut a little bit more. will just be boned out. Now what I want to do is cut some nice little chops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut right between each set of ribs here. Start on this side. Now that I've gone down all the ribs on the one side, I'm going to turn it over here and do the same over here. But I'm not going to cut all the way because I want to make my two cuts match up. Well, Rosemary's come in. Uh, Look at that. Not perfect, but it's just, I got practice. Uh huh. <laughs> Sure. So what do you do with it now? I'm going to go salt it. i got to stretch mm -hmm. it out and salt it. But Do you have a place to lay it flat? Yes, by okay. the, over by the steer one. Good. Yep. All right. Well, there's a project out of the way. All right. So what I'm doing now is I'm using my little cleaver here. And I put it right in that incision that I made. meat out of the way. Got my mallet. I don't have a mallet, so this piece of wood has to do. Got a double rib chop there. I can take my cleaver again. These will be cleaned up, of course, but I've got a rib, a portion of the spine, and a nice little bit of meat. These will taste great on the grill. So, I have these cleaned up, these rib chops here, and I just want to talk about them a little bit because it's interesting to look at them, the different ones. You know, if you were cutting up 
a cow. Up top you would have your rib steaks and your ribeye steaks. And then as you go down, you transition into T-bones and porterhouse. And then finally down here on this part I have get cut up, you'd have sirloin steaks. So what I've done here is I've followed all the ribs all the way down. And if you look at these, you'll see longer ribs um, more toward the front. You have basically ribeyes. Um, farther down, you have a bit of a T structure. You would have what would be a T-bone, I guess. But basically what we have here for all of these is a piece of the rib and a piece of the spine. And Rosemary will put these, you know, um, in a marinade and put them in the oven. Um, you know, I've grilled them in the past and they're just so good just like that. So, you know, all the ribs uh, chopped up like that. Um, you know, we'll put them in the freezer and we'll just call them um, rib chops or something like that and they're a treat. So now I'm dealing with the uh, lower down part, I guess you could say the sirloin. This time I think I'm gonna do something more like I'm, I'm seeing a, a tenderloin down here on the inside and you know a loin here and I'm gonna see if I can do sort of a boneless thing. I'm gonna take out the tenderloin first just like I would a deer. Basically I'm you know taking out the good stuff but it's gonna be boneless this time. Let's just see what I can get out. A goat is smaller than a deer so it's not like there's that much there. There's definitely something if you follow the rib. Tenderloin. Not too much, but I'll clean that up. And it could be tenderloin steak. Try to do the same thing on the other side. All right, well there are two of them. And these can be cleaned up. Well, I've got these cleaned up, two little tenderloin strips there. Now I'm going to take basically the top along the spine here and I'm gonna debone and I'm gonna see if I can make some sort of loin strip. Let's see how this goes. So basically I'm just following the spine down. <clears throat> All right, nearly done with this. All right, well here we go. Up here you had the loin area, here you had the sirloin where the back legs connected and basically I boned out the whole thing there. On this end you can see sirloin, on this end you have the loin plus some of the flank hanging there and on this side same thing, sirloin and uh, loin, no flank hanging from this one really. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right here, separate off the loin, clean this up, and I'll have two very nice looking little loin strip steaks, I guess I'll call them. And here too for the sirloin, I'll clean this up and these will make for some really nice boneless sirloin steaks. This part here, I'll bone out a little better and then I'll be done with this. Now I need to turn my attention to the rest of the goat. Obviously I still have the, uh, um, the uh, uh, back legs and the front legs and the neck. So I figure I'll start with the neck. And you know, we could put this in the crock pot. Once I clean it up, I have to get the esophagus and everything out of it. It could just go in the crock pot as is. 
and um, you know, maybe that's what I'll do. Um, the other option is to make a boneless roast out of it, which is ordinarily what I do for a deer. Um, you know, the difference is, first of all, you put uh, bone-in roasts in the freezer, they don't keep quite as well. Yet at the same time, when you put something in the crock pot like this, you want to get all the goodness out of it. And the fact is that a neck roast has a lot of bones along the vertebrae, and it's really hard to get it nicely boned out. So I always go back and forth on whether to do bone in or no bone. If it's venison, because the bones tend to give venison a peculiar flavor, you know, I definitely do boneless. But for the goat, it's not quite like that. The goat bones are nice to have in the roast. So, you know, I'll do those four shank roasts, and here I think I'll do a bone in roast. But what I'm taking out right now is the esophagus, right along the base of the neck. I can definitely get some meat for grinding out of this yet. <coughs> that has to come out, definitely good for grinding. And this can go to the dogs. This the windpipe, that can go to the dogs too. And here I have my roast, just in need of a little touch up here. <coughs> Take the loose meat off, that's generally what I do. Not really any silver skin to speak of there. Just clean this up. All this meat will be ground, so it's definitely not going to waste. Mostly this is for presentation more than anything else. Really nice looking roast there. Okay, a bone-in neck roast. Uh, definitely easier than the boneless version. What I'm dealing with here is the four shank. And, you know, there are a couple different things I could do here. Um, it could just be boned out for ground meat, but we have a lot of ground beef right now, and, you know, a roast isn't a bad thing. So, what I'm going to do, I think, is try to make a four shank roast out of the majority of this. Um, I'm going to cut above the joint here, and this is going to be boned out, this part, right here. So this is the lower part of the front leg. It can just be boned out. Up here, I'm gonna cut off the very top blade here because there's not much to it. So it can be boned out as well. Let's make a cut right there. crock pot better. In here, I think you could call this a blade roast. 
more than anything else, it's pretty much what it is. You know, I'll cut some of this meat that's loose off, all for boning out. Get that cleaned up. I think I'll call that a blade roast. Clean that up a little better. But I also wanted to show you hind leg. There's a lot of meat on the hind leg here. The round, I guess you could call it. And like with the front leg, I'm going to cut the shank off here, this lower part of the leg, for boning out. It's like right here. part. Now the upper part here could be cleaned up to be a very large roast. But the other possibility and what I'm going to do here because we have plenty of roasts is I'm actually going to cut it in some leg steaks. And the trick for that is basically I'm looking for the crease in the meat, boning it out along the crease in the meat. It doesn't have to be perfect because I can always grind some of this stuff up. But there's some natural creases along the bone here. The bottom and the top of the round, basically. So my bone in this one here deboned. You can see the crease there. Follow along there. And I've got this one, I've got this one deboned. And stuff to follow along the bone. Okay, so the femur bone here can be boned out. And I have my three pieces of the round, which I can clean up and slice into some leg steaks, which will be very good. Well, I finished boning out the rest of the goat and I wanted to show you what the final yield is. Here it is all laid out. I have my leg steaks here. Quite a number of them. Since they come from all three portions, there's a little difference in the consistency, but they'll all taste good. I have those tenderloin strips here. Two of them, obviously, one from each side. Here are my sirloin steaks, nice, thick things. This would be good for rosemary and for myself. Loin strips. This is from the top. Got those nice rib chops, plenty of them. Got my ribs, two sides. This would be great in the crock pot. Two blade roasts from the front, top of the front legs, shoulder blade there, bone in. Neck roast, one of course, very large roast. And here in this pail, I have my scrap meat, diced up, I'll let it semi-freeze and uh, tomorrow we'll grind that and I'm trying to decide in here from process, uh, killing the goat yesterday I have first of all of course uh, there's the liver a couple kidneys got the heart here 
And here we have what's called call fat. See the membrane there? This call fat is the fat from around the stomach. And I haven't yet used goat's call fat. I've used uh, the steer's call fat and pig's call fat in the past. And what I've done is wrapped uh, spiced meat in it sort of make burgers. I, I call them call fat burgers. And I'm thinking that I'm going to grind uh, the organs in with the scrap meat or maybe just the scrap meat. I haven't decided yet. And I will wrap that in the call fat and make some uh, burgers with spiced ground goat meat, maybe with the organs, maybe not. And that's how I'll handle the ground meat. Well, in any case, what you see on the table right here was today's project. It's amazing how much meat you get out of one uh, goat. And you know, when you have a goat prime age like this, it really is worth taking the time and it shows respect for the animal. Really, this is an animal we raised uh, from uh, a kid. It was born here. Uh, it was pastured here, it's never been off the farm, processed here, and now broken down and will be enjoyed here as well. One of the things we do in the winter, um, uh, take care of our own meat supply. That's it for today. Happy Epiphany, and God bless.